Hey, and welcome back for more Pizza Legends. In this video, we're gonna implement camera movement. Currently, our characters can move around the screen, but the environment that they move in feels very stationary. We're gonna change our viewport behavior to actually follow our hero character around the screen. This is gonna make the whole thing feel a little bit more exploring friendly, and it's a key part of the feel of this genre of game. If you've missed any of the previous episodes, they're all linked below. Let's get started with a diagram voiceover. So this is how our game is set up right now. This gray area represents the game viewport. We're drawing a map to the screen and then two different game objects, positions four or five on the hero here and then three, seven on this NPC. Everything is relative to the top left corner. That's the thing that's always staying constant. So for us to place this object here, we go over one, two, three, four, and then down one, two, three, four, five. Same for the NPC. Now the camera effect that we're going for has a character always centered in the screen. So for us, it's gonna be this hero character, but in theory, you know, you could switch it to be whoever you want. Uh, and so what we wanna end up with is something more like this, where all the state is the same. They're still at the same positions, four, five, three, seven, but the character, the hero character here is drawn completely in the center, and then everything else is relative to that position. So let's go ahead and break down the approach here on how we wanna achieve this. Essentially what we want to do is take the hero or the camera person and nudge them 10 and a half cells from the left side of the screen and then also six from the top. So where did this 10.5 come from? Our game viewport is sized to fit exactly 22 16 pixel spaces across one way. I took a screenshot of a map that we'll see in future videos as we continue to build the game out. Doesn't look like this yet, but it will after a few more videos, um, which I think the bigger map demonstrates the point better. But essentially, since we have 22 spaces wide, we can take one of those and designate it for the camera person's position. And so that brings us down to 21 left. If we take that 21 and divide it in half, we get two segments of 10.5. Said differently, if you take 10.5, add one, and then add another 10.5, you'll end up with 22 spaces total. It's worth noting that these kinds of numbers are usually figured out really early in a game development cycle during the planning phase. So for me, I had made the art for this game and kind of figured out this is a good size for everything to be. If you're working with different size assets, these numbers might be different for you, but the concept should be the same. So you'll just have to tweak it however you need to. So now when we iterate through each game object in our game loop to draw them to the screen, we need to do a little bit more math in the coordinate space here. Essentially, we're gonna start with each object's position, add in that nudge, and then subtract the camera person's position. So for the hero here, uh, these numbers will cancel each other out. But for NPCs and other objects, things will still be drawn to the screen in their correct stateful position, but relative to the centered hero. We can apply that same concept to the map image by basically just taking the nudge value and then subtracting the hero's position, and everything will be drawn in the correct spot on the canvas. Let's start writing the code to make this camera thing happen. Here's a quick reminder of where our game is right now. Again, I can guide the hero around, uh, but right now the camera doesn't actually follow him around the room. That's what we're gonna add today. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go into our overworld code. That's overworld.js. And we wanna establish an object that the camera, uh, I keep saying camera, that's really an overly fancy word for what we're talking about here, but um, we're really gonna uh, establish an object that the camera should follow around. So for us, it's gonna be the hero most of the time, but in theory, we could change that to be kind of any character on the screen. So we'll say establish the camera person. This is gonna be this.map.mapobjects.hero for starters. Oops, it's actually game objects, not map objects. Now that we have the camera person established, we can go ahead and pass it into our drawing method. So a few lines down here, we have object.sprite.draw. Pass it into context, but let's also pass in one more piece of information. That's gonna be the object to sort of reference when you're drawing yourself. Let's go ahead and add it to the actual signature. So I'm gonna open up sprite.js, find our draw method. Then we're gonna be able to pass in a camera person here. And here, when we're figuring out our X, Y math, we can go ahead and incorporate the camera person's position as well as that offset that we talked about before. So we're gonna say utils.withgrid to get our you know, space sizing utility going on. We said 10.5 is how many on the left we wanna shift over. And then we're gonna subtract the camera person's position. So that's X. And then now we can do the same kind of idea with Y. We're gonna update the value though to six to go uh, six grid cells from the top of the screen. And then of course use the Y value. Let's just see what this looks like. So popping over to the browser and oops, reloading. 
and now uh, it's working. It looks a little bit trippy, and that the reason is because our overworld map is still there, but I think if we take that out for a second, the whole thing may be more clear. Uh, so we'll take the lines where it says draw a lower layer, comment that out, same for the upper layer. Back to Chrome, reload. Okay, now we don't see that to distract us. Uh, but if I hold left, you can see that the NPC looks like they're moving further away, or the character's moving further away. If I hold right, uh, same thing. And so, it, you know, the effect looks like it's working fine. Now we just need to factor in the same positional stuff to the map to make sure that also renders at the correct spot. So let's go ahead and get our overworld map figured out. Uh, we can go ahead and put the code back in to draw it, both sides, the upper and lower layers. And then we'll go into our file overworldmap.js. And currently, right, so draw a lower image that's only just taking a context. But we also want to take in one of those camera persons. Same down here. In the spot that we call these methods, we can go ahead and pass our person, camera person, upper and lower. Here in these methods, you can see our zero zero is hard coded there, and that's what we want to change. So again, we'll do our same grid thing. So utils with grid 10.5 cells, and then we're going to subtract the camera person's position to kind of go in the opposite way of whichever way they're moving. We're going to do this. Oop. 10.5. We're going to do the same thing with the Y section. I'm going to give us some more space here just by breaking this out a little bit more. OK, so Y. Uh, we're going to do 6, just like we did before. And this time, we're going to subtract the camera person Y. And we can do all the same stuff for both methods, upper and lower. We could consolidate these and like refactor it to not be so repetitive, and that would be fine. We may do that in a second. Uh, but for now, I'm OK with this. So let's fire this up and see what it looks like. Over to Chrome, hard reload. Hey, our map is there. And nice, when I move the character now, see that the map moves, the character's moving. We definitely have that illusion of a camera going on. So this feels much better. There's one little problem though. I don't know if you see when I go to the top of the room, you can see there's a little imperfection here that's happening. And then also the uh, NPC is bouncing around a tiny bit. If you look at her shadow, and I, as I move, she kind of shifts around just a tiny bit. It's a little hard to see. So popping back into our code, to sort of figure out the problem. The issue is that uh, currently we are updating objects and drawing objects in one loop, but now we've introduced a dependency where certain objects care about the camera person for what they're gonna draw. So we really want the camera person to update all the way. We really want all the updates to happen before we draw anything. And so instead of these sharing a loop, we're gonna go ahead and move um, the object update into its own loop. So I'll go ahead and copy this code. And before we do anything, drawing related, we're going to go ahead and run all of our updates. So I'm going to move this object to update part out here and say a little comment, update all objects. Now we do have to be a little bit careful with a performance concern, or we should at least talk about it, that technically now we have introduced another loop, and that can, can be a performance problem, but we are dealing with such a small number of objects that for us it's negligible, it's not really gonna be a problem. If we were dealing with a game that had like hundreds of objects going on or much larger maps or something, we'd probably have to figure out some sort of optimization here, but for us in the scope of this game, it's gonna be totally fine. So let's fire up the browser here and just see this in action. When I reload, you can see that I can walk and those little imperfections are gone where there's no more jankiness, there's no more little bits here. Everything is updating all the way and then drawing itself so we don't see any of those weird visual artifacts. There's one more cool thing to show here, at least I think. Uh, if we can go back into the code, right now our camera person is always the hero, but if you remember in our overworld map, our NPC uh, is available to us here as well. And so say that we didn't want to focus the camera on the hero, we wanted that to be on the NPC instead for some reason, um, you could do that, just make that change here, changing the reference to the camera person, and then fire up the game. And now the camera is centered here on this person, and meanwhile I can still move around the map too. This is kind of cool for maybe cutscenes where you're normally in control of the, the hero player, but maybe you start a conversation and then the focus of the game should like go to a character over here and then come back to the hero. You can do that with this system. It's pretty cool. So our camera systems come together really nicely. See here, I can walk around the room and the camera follows me around, makes me want to explore a little bit more. It feels pretty good. So in the next video, we're going to start talking about collisions. 
This game currently has no concept of collisions where I can just guide the character right through this counter or right through the wall, uh, right through this NPC here. We're gonna start adding spots that you can't walk to and that's gonna further the illusion that we're in an actual room. We're also gonna be talking about cutscene zones. So for example, uh, there's this little doorway here. When I step through that, I wanna leave this room and enter a different overworld map. So how do we set up that kind of trigger point where something happens when I step on a certain space? All of that is coming up next. Thank you so much for watching this episode. As usual, if you're liking the series, please hit the like button on the video uh, and be sure to subscribe to see the other episodes as they come out. If you haven't already, please join us in Discord. Tell us about the game that you're making now or a game that you wanna make in the future. We'd love to see you in there. Thank you so much. See you next time.